Hello, everybody. It's so nice to greet all of you, at least electronically. I really appreciate your decision to participate at the joyful award ceremony. I'm very proud and grateful for having been selected as a co-recipient of this year's Amber Mario Prize, awarded by the Raoul Wallenberg Association, an honor I shall cherish for the rest of my life. As an expression of gratitude, I would like to share with you some of, some of my fond memories and feelings of appreciation about both Ember Mario and the Wallenberg Association. But first, I'd like to express my thanks to several friends and colleagues who had found me worthy of this prestigious award. I owe a debt of gratitude to Andras Heisler and Peter Tordoy, the current and former presidents of the Association of the Jewish Communities of Hungary, for nominating and supporting me for the award. I would like for the award. I would like to express my thanks and appreciation to Dr. Josef Shebesh, the current president of the Raoul Wallenberg Association, and the other members of the award committee, Andras Balint, Mrs. Tomasz Kardos, Andras Sipos, Akos Siladi, and Julia Vaida. Special thanks are due to Mrs. Kardos, the secretary of the award committee, for keeping me posted about the award. I would also like to thank my good friend and colleague, Professor Judith Molnar, an internationally recognized expert on the Holocaust in Hungary, for her readiness to represent me at this joyful event. Finally, I would like to salute and congratulate Titus Hardy, the director of the Bentis Gymnasium of Pannonhalma, my fellow recipient of this year's Ember Mario Prize in recognition of his achievements. Now let me share with you some of my first memories about Ember Mario. I first came across Mario's interest in the Holocaust by reading her Magabnok Meshelek that was published in 1968. It aroused my interest because it was one of the first Holocaust-related works that was published during the communist era, an era during which the Jewish question in general and the Holocaust in particular were sunk in the Orwellian black hole of history. Like many thousands of others, I was particularly impressed. Six years later, in 1974, when I read her sensational High to Conyar, a trailblazing fictionalized biographical account, the work traces her horrendous experiences in the ghetto of Solnok and in various camps in and around Strasov, Austria, where she was deported in the summer of 1944 at the age of 13. Ember's work became an instant bestseller. It was translated into several languages and clearly played an important role in starting, however slightly, an ever more daring dialogue about the horrors of the Nazi era in general and the tragedy of Hungarian Jewry in particular. It was her work that inspired George Saros, among many others, to publish his equally sensational Egy elő ítélet nyomában two years later. In my general bibliography of the Holocaust in Hungary, I have 
22 references to Mario's works on various aspects of the Holocaust. Among them, I found of particular interest <clears throat> a comprehensive account of the history of the Jewish community of Abad Saluk, the small town near Solnok, where she was born in 1931. On a more personal note, it was my great privilege to meet and get to know her several times, both in Budapest and in New York, where she was our guest for several days many years ago. As to my feelings of, appreci of appreciation for the Raoul Wallenberg Association, I have followed the historically important educational and cultural activities of the association ever since its establishment in 1989, shortly after the collapse of the communist system. I followed it with great personal and professional interest. I've been particularly impressed with the many and highly productive activities, including the protection of the historical integrity of the Holocaust, the struggle to unmask and combat any and all manifestations of prejudice and racism, and the advancement of Holocaust studies at the secondary school and university levels. The activities of the Raoul Wallenberg Association today are more important than ever before. The history of the Horthy era in general and of the Holocaust in particular is being distorted and falsified in an increasingly brazen fashion, spearheaded by some of the top governmental and political leaders of Hungary, the history cleansing campaign aims to absolve the Horthy regime of any responsibility for the Holocaust, placing exclusive blame on the Germans. Supported by an army of pseudo-scholars, institute and museum experts, and Holocaust deniers, all with history cleansing sponges in their hands. The current national populist leaders aim to erase the fact that the Horthy regime after the German occupation of the country on March 19, 1944, played a determining role in the murder of close to 600,000 patriotic fellow citizens of the Jewish faith. The final solution in Hungary was made possible primarily because the members of the newly established government of Dömes Tomai, Tomai, all constitutionally appointed by Miklos Horthy, placed the instruments of state power, the police, gendarmerie, and civil service at the disposal of those in charge of the final solution. The relatively few members of the Eichmann Sonderkommando would have been helpless without this support. Eichmann himself was impressed with the eagerness and barbarism with which his Hungarian accomplices wanted to solve the Jewish question in Hungary. I'm firmly convinced that truth and justice will ultimately triumph and that today's false patriots will end up in the dung heap of history. I'm also confident that the Raoul Wallenberg Association and the organized Jewish communities will, in cooperation with the many other Jewish and Christian civic organizations continue the struggle for the creation of a truly democratic Hungary, a country guided by the principles of justice, pluralism, and tolerance. I'll be rooting for you. <laughs>